Let's do it. I got this little kit online of 11 gauge cold rolled steel. So I thought I would show two things with it. Number one is flash tacking, also called speed tacking, and then also TIG brazing with silicon bronze, and I'm going to be using pulse settings. I'm plugged into 115 on a 20 amp circuit, and I'm using a CKMT200. And so my max amperage on DC is 140 on 115 volt. This machine has a panel and remote switch. So basically when it's on remote, that's for the foot pedal. A lot of small TIG welders have this button. And what a lot of people might not realize is that you can use this for doing speed tacking just by switching it on panel. That turns your pedal into an on-off switch. Not a great idea on every single alloy, but on cold rolled steel, it can save a lot of time. I'm also going to save a little bit of argon by turning my post flow down a little bit. I'm not going to need any post flow for these speed tacks and I'm dropping down to a number four cup with only about 10 CFH of argon. I'm going to get some really small flash tacks on the very corners here and basically what that involves is I just prop the cup and I point the tip right into the root of the joint with a pretty close arc length, tap the pedal on and off and it flashes and tacks. Here we go. I don't know where I got this little hand thing. I think it's a soldering tool, but it's copper and it comes in really handy for holding down little corners when I'm doing tacks like this. I'm switching over now to a number 12 Furic ceramic cup. I'm going to bump the argon up to about 30. It really helps to have a good blanket of argon for silicon bronze TIG brazing. There's a reason why I skipped so far ahead here, and that's because my camera was going in and out of focus, and I didn't realize that until I was this far. Just as well, though, because I've got some really good arc shots to show you here on these last two joints. I like to use pulse for TIG brazing with silicon bronze. That way pulse it lets me on. just leave a 330 second touching. filler rod in the pulse. Really... One pulse per second and about 30% on the background current. This machine is fixed on the pulse time at about 50%. By using a pretty tight arc and with having that really good blanket of argon from the 12 cup, it prevents a lot of oxidation and it kind of keeps the heat down. And this is the technique after monkeying with several techniques that I found I got the best results with. I'll show it in slow motion here in just a second. Again, I'm using 332nd diameter silicon bronze filler. The technique that I found worked best was to scoot ahead a full eighth of an inch and then pause on the low end of the pulse. So while the amperage was higher, I moved ahead a good full eighth of an inch and then paused and let it cool momentarily. And then I'm trying to do this evenly, trying to meter in my mind's eye an eighth of an inch at a time. Another thing about silicon bronze is you really need to taper off the amperage really slowly when you terminate the end of a bead. Otherwise, you can easily wind up having a small fisheye crater hole, and who needs that? But you can avoid it by tapering off really slowly, and I will show that. I'll show a close-up of tapering off the amperage at the very end of this bead. I had the machine amperage set on 120 on the panel, but I'm using the foot pedal. So right now, I'm peeking out at about 105 amps. It's dropping down into the 30s. Sometimes I'm full pedal on this, though. It just depends on where I am and how hot the piece is. Coming to the very end here, two or three ripples before the end, I'll start tapering the pedal and then go really slow tapering off right here on the very end. A few things about silicon bronze, the metal needs to be really clean and it really, really helps to have a large cup like this number 12 so you have a nice blanket of argon to prevent oxidation. Silicon bronze is not nearly as strong as weld metal but it's definitely got some uses. A lot of people face their hammers when they're working with stainless steel to prevent scratching it. It's used on hinges and handles on industrial furniture. It's fun to work with.